Good, mor good morning. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try it again. Good morning. There we go. I almost felt like I was at football practice trying to get the kids' attention. <laughs> Rich, for that you can run some suicides. Welcome to uh, First Baptist Church. Glad to see you here. Glad to see your smiling faces. What's that? Okay. Take two. Is that all? Test, test. <laughs> what? Check, check. Check, check. Yeah, I'll, I'll get, ah, right, there we go. <laughs> Great. So, well, like I said, there's a flyer in the back, uh, November 1st through the 5th, which today is November 5th. Uh, all day. If you haven't noticed, there's a new Jersey Mike's um, right off there, off 136. Uh, they are offering 20% off of your order uh, for their grand opening. Or, sorry, they will donate 20% of your sale. It's not 20% off. 20% um, of your sale in support of the Community Service Center of Northern Champaign County. Thank you for that correction. Uh, you can tear off your, the side piece of your bulletin and register your attendance 
uh, as usual. And of course, you can mark if you need uh, prayer, if you want pastor to uh, be praying about something, you want the church to be praying, uh, if you want it to be private as well, you can uh, note that as well. I'm going to have Stacy come up real quick to, hopefully the pulpit mic is working, uh, to tell some comments about trunk and treat. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I just want to give you an update about trunk and treat. Um, first of all, everyone that volunteered, thank you so much. It ran so smoothly and it went super well. Um, if you brought in candy, thank you so much for that as well. Um, the kids very much thank you for that. Um, just to sh shoot out some numbers to you, um, we had cooked about 200 hot dogs. We ran out of hot dogs around 7 o'clock. Um, mind you, Trunk and Treat started at 6, ended at 8. So halfway through, we ran out of hot dogs. Um, we had, I don't even know how many bags of candy, a whole bunch of bags of candy, and we ran out of candy about 20 after 7 as well. Um, so thank you so much. Um, again, it was a great event. Um, we, it was a blessing that we were able to be inside because it was so cold outside. Um, so I know a lot of families were thankful for that because it was so cold that they were able to just come inside and warm up. I know at the end of the night, there were a couple girls that were just like, can we have some coffee, please? Um, because we're so cold and we're like, ah, we don't have any coffee made right now, but you can stay in here as long as you want and warm up. So they did, they just hung out and they warm up, warmed up while we broke everything down um, and everything. So just having that available for them to be able to warm up on a fun night for them um, was just a blessing in itself. So again, thank you everyone that brought candy, just prayed about it or even um, helped out at the event. We appreciate it so much, so. Yes, Trung and Treat was a, a really good time. This next week, we had a couple uh, great things happening here in service. We got a couple people uh, who are going to be baptized. So it's always an exciting thing, uh, so make sure you're here for that. Uh, a couple of people are recommitting their lives and faith uh, to Jesus and are going to be baptized as part of that. So um, that's an amazing thing. And also, if you have been thinking about maybe committing your life to Jesus or being baptized, um, just let Pastor know and he can visit with you. Also next Sunday uh, is an opportunity, community opportunity, to attend the community ministerial co-op Thanksgiving service. That'll be at Rantoul Community Church, which is at 109 North Century Boulevard. Uh, it's the old Fastenal building. And that service starts at 5 o'clock. Next up, Melinda, can you raise your hand? Melinda down here. She's helping to organize a More Blessed to Give children's shopping event. A uh, really cool event that she's putting together. It's going to be at Rantoul's uh, Seek and Find Saturday, December 16th from 2 to 5. Um, if you want to volunteer as part of that event, please let her know. Uh, also, if you would like to donate some items. And you can email her as well. Her email is in the bulletin. Hey.
Thank you, Linda. That was much better. <laughs> um, <laughs> she, she is, um, Melinda uh, brought that event to us on the vision committee, and uh, we were all in, in great support of it. So thank you. Now, that was great, great addition to the announcement. Um, Andrew Rains was supposed to be here today with us, a guest speaker. He's the resident manager of Lake Springfield Baptist Camp. He had a conflict, so he had to reschedule, so he hopefully will be here towards the end of the month instead. Uh, this is the first Sunday of the month, as you know, so we'll have communion later. If you are uh, on live stream at home, make sure to grab your communion elements ahead of time. But also, uh, at the end of service, there will be a deacon in the back to collect for the benevolence offering for the deacon's fund. And with that, I'm going to, I believe we have a video to show for our missions moment. I never chose to become a Buddhist monk. My parents chose it for me. They sent me far away to a monastery. And my father left me there. For the next nine years, I was trained to be a monk. Eight hours a day, seven days a week. All I did was memorize and recite. Memorize and recite. The words of the Buddhist text spoke of peace and tranquility. But my teachers lived something very different. I was 13 when I finally ran away from the monastery. You left the monastery, why? Shame! My father said I had shamed the family because I didn't finish my training. He enrolled me in first grade. He would begin my education all over again. Okay, so today we have a new student joining us. So everyone say hello to Sejun. You? You? And you look like you. One of my teachers talked to me with respect, showed me a kindness I never experienced in monastery. You can read this for me, uh, the first John. Okay, great. God showed how much he loved us by sending his He's one, one day and one only. What is this? Huh? You're not supposed to read these types of books in the house. Hey, 
Hey, Seju, where are you going? I don't know. I can go home. His wife have given me a place to stay. I'm reading more from the book David gave me. I have read about the light. It is the light I want. It's always powerful videos, or yeah, I get Voice of the Martyr emails as well, uh, some of the stories that they have from overseas and just some of the things people go through uh, just to follow Jesus over there uh, in many places around the world. Um, and just seeing that little boy in the video with the Bible and how sometimes we take our Bibles for granted. Like we got Bibles here throughout the church in the pews on our shelves at home, but sometimes they collect dust and we don't read them. Uh, or we got Bibles on our phone, but we never open the app. Uh, we take those things for granted sometimes. And some, like I know Voice of the Martyrs, oftentimes they ask for donations so they can buy Bibles. That's one of the things people cherish when their house gets burned down uh, because they're a believer in Christ and their house gets burned down. The first thing they ask for is a Bible so that they can have uh, God's word at their hands. Uh, it's, that's always powerful things. Uh, before I transition to call to worship, I wanted to mention too, I'm on the like board planning committee for the American Baptist Youth uh, in our region here. So we're having our gathering retreat this weekend uh, in Peoria. And Alex will be going over there with me. So if you can keep us in prayer, that would be great for a good weekend there. Um, when I preach and end the service now, I like to end with a phrase that the pastor at my brother Dante's church in Minneapolis ends with. He, said, he always says, the worship service is over, now let's go be the church. Um, and it's that first part that I'm thinking about this morning, the worship service. Uh, and then after seeing the video too, right, we have the opportunity and the freedom to come and gather and worship, uh, to gather in praise of God, no matter how we do that, right? Whether we're hands in the air, we're loud, singing praise, or whether we're quiet and we're reflective as we praise and worship. No matter how we do it, we're supposed to be here to worship God and to praise him. All right, we bring everything that we are to worship, and that's the good and the bad. So if things are going on, we have the opportunity to bring our needs and requests to God who hears them, who hears us. Uh, we have the opportunity to praise him and to pray to him. And so I say, don't take that lightly this morning. All right, we have the opportunity to be in God's presence, to be in God's house. All right, we're able to walk through that door this morning freely without fear of being arrested. Uh, we have the freedom to worship and the freedom to praise. I know individually sometimes we probably go through the motions. So let's not go through the motions today. Let's give God our best this morning. Our call to worship is from Psalm 118, 24 to 29. Uh, and it's, it's, it's that. It's a song of praise to God. It reminds us also to take our requests to God when we find ourselves in need and to give him thanks for his many blessings. All right, Thanksgiving is coming up soon. Time that we get to be thankful and, and uh, give our blessings to God. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Please, Lord, please save us. Please, Lord, please give us success. 
Bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God shining upon us. Take the sacrifice and bind it with cords on the altar. You are my God and I will praise you. You are my God and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Let's pray. God, we do thank you that we uh, freely come before you and worship. We pray, Lord, that you would be with us today as we uh, sing songs of praise, as we hear your word, as we come to your table remembering your sacrifice. We thank you for that sacrifice, and we thank you for the many blessings that you give to us in our lives. Lord, help us to not go through the motions this morning. Help us to praise you with everything that we are, because you are worthy of that praise. So God, be with us today. Be with Pastor as he uh, brings your word to us. And help us leave here encouraged and excited to go and be the church, to go and serve, and to go and share who you are and to shine your light. In Jesus' name, amen. Invite the praise team to come and lead us in a time of praise and worship. And you may stand and join along.
Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for being the one who can make it well with our soul. We thank you for being the one that can uh, make it right when it's wrong, the one that can lift us up when we're down, the one that can show us the way when we're lost. We thank you for all those things, God, and we pray that you would prepare our hearts this morning, prepare our hearts to hear your word, prepare our hearts to come to your table later, prepare our hearts to be your servants. We thank you for this chance to worship and to praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Church can come forward for our morning tithes and offerings. to God in prayer. God, we do thank you for who you are. Thank you for the love you have for us and expressing that love in so many ways. In part, God, you make it possible for us to have a living, to, to have food and clothes and shelter, and we thank you for that. God, we give back to you this morning a, a little bit of all you've given us, just for our way of saying we love you, we thank you. And God, we ask that you use this offering, use these tithes to the, for the furtherance of your kingdom. Pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, it's good to be back with you today. I, I thank you for allowing me to... Get away for a few days, and thanks, Andre, for preaching uh, last week about the older brother that wasn't able to be here, but I was able to uh, watch the service online, and it was great. I enjoyed being able to worship with you, even though I wasn't here. I don't know about you, but that uh, uh, video that was shown, the voice of the mar martyrs, was uh, very powerful. It impacted me tremendously. Um, I don't know if you've ever been out and about, been to different parts of the country. You, you see that in different countries, different parts of the world, uh, people don't have the same privileges that, that we do. They don't have the, the same things that we take for granted. And in those areas, uh, like the, the Operation Shoebox, uh, the, the privilege of having just a shoebox given to you with maybe some pair of mittens and uh, some gloves or... or a toy or something that just you can't imagine how much that means to somebody. Sometimes we forget the, the power and the impact that simply showing love and compassion to somebody can have in their lives. Maybe you take it for granted. You've been loved all your life. You've been surrounded by friends and family all your life. You, you've never been rejected really to, to speak of because your family's always been there for you or, or maybe you have struggled and you know what it's like to, to be rejected. But we can have a tremendous power 
an impact on people's lives uh, by showing kindness, by showing graciousness, by, by extending mercy and compassion to those around us. When we allow God to speak through us and speak his love to others, it can have way more impact than you, you ever imagined. We're going to be talking about that to, to, uh, today, in the next few weeks. And one of the things that we're going to be talking about is something that a, a lot of people say, oh, the church talks about money too much. The church is always asking for more money. You guys are just so focused on money. I wish you'd talk about something else. Well, the good news is, you haven't heard me talk about money very much. I, I don't preach about money a lot, but the way I'm going through the red letters right now, talking about the, the, the words of Jesus that started at the beginning of, of his ministry and going through, whenever Jesus stops and talks about money, guess what? I'm going to stop and talk about money as well. The reality is Jesus talked a lot about money, he talked a lot about possessions. He talked a lot about the, the things that we value, the things that we trust, the things that we hold dear in our hearts. And, and sometimes it, that amounts to cash. It, it amounts to uh, money that we have. Uh, I don't know, this is a $20 bill. For some people who don't have really much money, this is a lot. You look at that and say, wow, I wish I could have a $20 bill. And and. I don't want to make a show of this, but if you need a $20 bill, it's up here. You can have it. Uh, if that's the difference of having food or not, come get it. Uh, but anyway, we, we, we look at that and say, wow, for some people, that, that makes a difference between whether I'm going to go hungry today or not. For other people, you say, ah, that's just a $20 bill. I've got a wad of them in my pocket. I don't really need a $20 bill, and I've got so much money in my, my pension or my bank account or whatever that... $20, what is $20? You know, it used to be that was real money, but anymore, well, that's, that's not that much. And I, I take it, you know, inflation has gone up. But the reality is, Jesus talks a lot about money. He talks a lot about the way we value money. He talks a lot about the way we use our money. And, and he talks a lot about the, the impact our money can have on our lives spiritually, and the impact it can have going into eternity on the way we value money, the way we value possessions, the way we value the stuff. But today, we're going to look at a, a really weird parable that Jesus taught. And if you've ever read this weird parable in Luke chapter 16, we'll start at verse 1, we'll go through about 12. You're probably like me, you've, you've read this parable and you scratch your head and say, what in the world is Jesus talking about? Because this is so weird, it almost sounds like Jesus is praising a guy for cheating and lying and absconding with somebody else's money. But the reality is what Jesus is actually saying is that money matters and the way we use our money matters and he has a spiritual lesson that we can have a spiritual impact on the people around us the people living near us by the way we use and invest our money essentially jesus is saying the way we have use our money can have a, a, a tremendous spiritual impact in our lives and in the lives of others. All right, so let's take a look at Luke chapter 16, and we'll, we'll first look at the, the, the parable, and we'll probably, even though I've read this dozens of times, I'm still going to get done and mentally kind of go, wow, what did Jesus just say? But let's take a look at this. Jesus told this story to his disciples. There was a certain rich man who had a manager handling his affairs. One day a report came that the manager was wasting his employer's money. So the employer called him in and said, What's this I hear about you? Get your report in order because you are going to be fired. The manager thought to himself, Now what? My boss has fired me and I don't have the strength to dig ditches and I'm too proud to beg. I know how to ensure that I'll have plenty of friends who will give me a home where I am fired. 
So he invited each person who owed him money to his employer and to come and discuss the situation. He asked the first one, how much do you owe him? And the man replied, I owe him 800 gallons of olive oil, which, I don't know, I looked it up, maybe that's about $26,000 value. So I owe him for 800 gallons of olive oil. And so the manager told him, take the bill and quickly change it to 400 gallons. So from $26,000 to $13,000. And how much do you owe my employer? He asked the next man. He said, I owe him 1,000 bushels of wheat. And I don't, I'm not a farmer. I think wheat's worth about $6.70 the bushel or something like that. So about $6,700 value is what he owes the guy. And he says, uh, take the bill and change it to 800 bushels. So just, just pay him a, a fraction of what you owe. And in, since the manager was still technically employed, he had the authority to, to speak for his boss, and this was a binding arrangement. And so the, 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 these guys were thrilled that they could save thousands of dollars that they owed to the boss, And which, by the way, is why anymore if you get fired, especially if you're a manager, chances are they walk in, take your key, and walk you out immediately and say, Get your stuff in the box and we're leaving because we're not going to give you opportunity to do what this guy did in Luke chapter 16. <laughs> so verse 8, the rich man had to admire the dishonest rascal for being so shrewd. We'll stop there. Now notice this says the rich man had to admire the rascal and, and the, the way I figured that the only reason the rich man admired this rascal was that this is the kind of thing the rich man might have done himself. And so he said, well, look at that. He got me back playing the, the same game I would play. He said, I got to give it to the guy. He was smart to do that. So it was the rich guy who had admired the rascal, not Jesus. We read on. And it's true that the children of the world are more shrewd in dealing with the world around them than children of the light. Now Jesus is making the transition. He's changing from talking about this weird parable about the manager who absconded with money and kind of cheated. And now he's going to get to the point. And part of the point is that the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with finances. They're, they're better business people sometimes than Christians are. And, and I... I Admit, I, I'm not the best at, at managing money, and I'm the best uh, business person. I, I tend to look back, you know, in what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, where he, he talks about uh, don't, don't put up yourself all of these uh, wages, don't, don't take all this money because uh, sooner or later you're going to lose it all. And you're, but, but put up treasures in heaven. That's where our emphasis should be. And so I looked at, well, okay, money's not that important. Why, why should I worry about it? And so a lot of Christians have kind of the similar mindset. Say, well, it's money's money. We don't have to worry that much about it. I've got enough to eat. God's taking care of my needs. Let's not worry about it. But for a lot of people who are not following God, their whole life is revolved around their money. Their whole world is, is centered on how much is in the bank account or what's in the garage or what's in the kitchen or, or the clothes they wear or the food they can eat, the parties they can go on, the jewelry they can wear, all this. That, that's their center of the universe. And, and if they can have lots of money, fantastic. That means they're more important. And so truly, a lot of the people of this world, meaning people who are not believers, they're more shrewd. They're perhaps better at, at getting money than a lot of Christians are. So he's making a point there. Now he's changing to get the real lesson that Jesus is trying to make. And I, I think that's key. And the New Living Translation, which I use, actually helps by, by adding three words in the first part of verse 9 that really isn't in the original Greek. But he added these three words here in this translation to help us understand now Jesus is pointing towards the lesson that he wants us to get. Verse 9, now 
Here's the lesson. And when, when you hear something like that, or maybe in, in sometimes he will just say, therefore, or shorten it up even to so. When you see therefore or so, or like this, here's the lesson, you need to say, okay, wait a minute. He, we're changing from what they just said. Now, this is what we need to pay attention to. And so here it is. Here's the lesson Jesus is teaching. Use your worldly resources to benefit others. Let's stop there. Use your worldly resources to benefit others. So what do you suppose that means? Use your money that you have to help people around you. Well, what I think of is what the Bible says back in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17. And actually, we find it in a lot of different places. I just happened to be reading this this last week, so I, I, I pulled this up. In Proverbs 19, verse 17, it says, If you help the poor, you're lending to the Lord, and he will repay you. If you help the poor, you're lending money to the Lord, and God will repay you. Now, let's put that concept of, of when I help the needy, I'm giving or loaning money to God, and God will repay you. Let's, let's plug that thought back into Luke chapter 16, when Jesus says, here's the lesson. Here, here's what I want you to get out of this. Use your worldly resources to benefit others. And reflect back when you help the poor. That's kind of the same thing, isn't it? Using your worldly resources to benefit others could very well be referring to helping the poor. And... Make friends. Then when your possessions are gone, they will welcome you into an eternal home. And we get a little weirded out here because now it sounds like we, we've earned our way into heaven. But I look back at Proverbs again and I think when I am giving money to the poor, I'm lending to God and God will repay me. Basically, I hear Jesus saying that God will bless us when we are using the resources God has put into our hands to help those around us who are needy. So I get that concept that money matters. And the way we use our money matters. It's not just Yours that you have, this $20 bill that I, I earned somewhere along the way, I took out of the bank, and, and I've had this, and I could say, well, this is mine, I can do whatever I want to, and nobody can say what I can do with my money, because this is mine, I earned it, I went to school, I got the education, I, I got the experience, I got the job, and I earned the money, this is mine. Well, kind of. I, I did go to school, and I did get the education, and I did spend years getting experience, and I did take the, the interview with the search committee, and I stood before the church, and you know, I explained who I was and what I was about and some of that sort of thing, and, and the church did call me to be the pastor, so yeah, all that's true, and because I'm the pastor, the, the church gave me money, but when I stop and think about it, God had a lot to do with all of that. The scholarships I had when I was uh, coming out of high school that made it possible for me to uh, pay for the college, that wasn't anything I did for that. That was a blessing from God. And having the, the mental ability to go to school, graduate from high school, to graduate from college, to go to seminary, not everybody has that ability. But... Where did that come from? Well, genetically, I suppose, from my parents. But it was God who manipulated all of the DNA and the, the chemistry to make me who I am and make it so that it's possible for me to study and become a pastor and be able to get up here and talk to you guys. I, I can't claim that that's because I'm so wonderful. That's because God has given me the ability to be here, to do this. So very, very truly, 
That $20 bill was given to me by God because God enabled me to be here to do this. I, I can't claim that, that it's all on me. And that's true for all of us, whether you're a doctor or a nurse or an attorney or a school teacher or whether you dig ditches or whether you solder pipes or whether you drive a truck or, or whatever it is you do for a living, God's the one who helped you get the ability to do that. God helped you earn that 20 or the 20,000 or, or whatever it is that you have. And God is kind of giving that money to us on loan. It really is his. And God gives that into our hands because he wants us to use it for his glory. He wants us to use it to help those around us. God knows there's lots and lots and lots of people like that little boy. There's lots of people out there in the, the, the streets around us who are homeless, who don't have anything to eat, didn't have breakfast today, not looking good for having lunch today, and supper, well, that, that's a big question mark too. A lot of people living in countries that are absolute poverty. The refugees who are doing their best to survive, staying away from the bombs and the bullets and and in the middle of all that, trying some way to have something to eat, warm clothes to wear, clean water to drink. God knows about all those people. God knows them by name. God loves each and every one of them. And, and part of the way, you know, we can say, well, God, why don't you do something about it? And that, that's the, the real trick God has. God has given us resources and God wants us to use our resources to be his hands his feet his pocketbook to reach out and help the needy that God has placed in our little world God has put hurting people who need love God has put hungry people who need food God has put people who've been abused, people who've had difficulties into our lives, and he wants us to be part of his solution to help them. So, sometimes that may be helping them financially. Sometimes it may be putting an arm around them and just let them cry on our shoulders. Sometimes it may be listening as they, they tell us their problems. There's all kinds of ways we can do it. But to use our worldly resources to benefit others, that's the lesson. God wants us to use what he's put into our control to benefit those others around us. Look down to verses 10, 11, and 12. If you're faithful in little things, you're going to be faithful in the big things. If you're dishonest in little things, you won't, be dis you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. If you're untrustworthy with worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? And if you're not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? The way we handle the little things of life, the way we handle the 20 or the 10, or the five, or the one dollar, or maybe you go down to a penny. The way you manage these gifts that God gives you is an indication of how well we could do if God gave us more. If we can't handle a 20, why would God give us a 200? Is there a 200? There's a 100, two 100s. Why would God give us a hundred or two hundred or a thousand or why would God give you that lottery or whatever if you can't manage the twenty dollars you already have in your pocket? Well, that sounds kind of harsh, Dan. Well, the point is, God wants us to manage well the resources he has given you. 
And I, I love the fact that this uses the word resources and not money. Because it's more than just the cash we have in our bank account. It may be the, the, the use of our talents. We've got skills and abilities that, that we can use. Maybe it may be use of, of wisdom that God's given that we can share with other people. Maybe it's because we're great listeners. And there's people around us who need to talk. And we can spend time listening as they, they share their needs and their burdens and their problems and, and needing just to have a friend. Use the resources you have to benefit others. I think that's a call from God to each one of us. As we reflect on our lives, we reflect on the resources God has given us, as we reflect on, on what God is giving us this week, opportunities he's putting before us. Take some time. Prayer, reflection, contemplation, and ask God, how can I use the resources you've given to me to benefit others this week? Let's look to God in prayer. Take a moment and just allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart on that question. Heavenly Father, I thank you for sharing this weird parable that makes us think. That help us to reflect deeply help us to not just think about this but God respond so that we can be people known for using your resources to help others and God when we do we ask that you would make the difference in other people's lives as a result of what we do because we aren't necessarily able to change people around us. We aren't necessarily able to change their situations. But God, as you work through us, we look forward to seeing the amazing miracles you can do through the power of your Holy Spirit as we are faithful to use the benefits you give us, the resources you give us to be a blessing to others. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite our musicians to come forward today and lead us in our song. And uh, while they are coming to sing, why don't you stand as we sing together our praises to God. I invite the deacons that they come forward at this time, and Andre, if you come forward as we prepare.
for the celebrating the Lord's Supper. The uh, celebration of communion, we talk about this every month. I read the same verses every month because I think it's important that we, we realize and remember why we do this. It's not just a matter of uh, taking juice and cookies. It's not just uh, a spiritual ritual that we go through. This is a time of genuine commitment to God. It's a time when we commit or recommit our lives to God and, and figuratively take the presence of God into our lives so that he becomes a part of us. And it's a way that we say to God and the way that we say to each other, I'm committing myself to him. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the Apostle Paul is reminding the church, as I'm reminding you, what this is about, why we do it, and how we should approach it. For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread, and he gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. So anyone who eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. That's why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. This is a, a sacred time. It's a time when we need to be serious in our commitment to God and, and do what the Bible says. Take some time to reflect and ask God to reveal in our hearts Areas, attitudes, actions that may be contrary to what he wants. And then do the spiritual work of submitting that to God and asking for his forgiveness as we repent and seek to try to follow his lead. I'm going to ask the deacons to step up and come forward. Let's have a word of prayer. God, it's mind-boggling to us that you would send your son here on earth, that he would live here among us to teach us about you and your love and then demonstrate your unfathomable love by giving his body and blood, died on the cross to pay the debt for our sins. God, we thank you for that great gift. And as we take this time to remember and to reflect, but help us to grasp even the smallest amount of the tremendous love you have for us. And God, help us to respond back to you in faith and repentance, committing or recommitting our lives in faith to you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Jesus took the bread and he broke it. He said, this represents my body which will be broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And Jesus took the cup, saying, this is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. And he passed it among his friends. He said, drink from it, all of you. Let's look to God in prayer. God, again, we thank you for the great love you have for us, inviting us to be part of your family, inviting us to receive you into ourselves and help us to serve you well. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. This time I invite the musicians to come and uh, lead us in our closing song. And while they're coming, let's stand together.
Thanks again for joining us in worship today, especially those also at home. Appreciate you joining in with us in live stream. Um, a reminder, the Benevolent Fund, Deacons will be at the back for that. That, that goes towards helping the needy in the community. Also, we uh, want to invite you, if you'd like to have prayer, have someone pray over you before you leave today, there'll be people up here at the front who will be glad to receive you and uh, have prayer with you before you leave. Let's look to God in prayer. God, we ask that you would bless us and keep us. We ask that your face would watch over us and be gracious to, you, that, that, to us, that you would be good to us and give us your peace. We pray that, God, and knowing that you want to bless us in that way, God, we thank you in advance for those blessings today. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.